Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me again. Today I wanted to talk about a fundamental of wildlife photography processing. Um, it's something that I don't see uh, talked about an awful lot on other YouTube channels, um, but it's something that's really, really important. So I thought I'd dedicate a video to it. And that is the art of cropping images uh, for the best possible results. So the reason I wanted to look at cropping and dedicate a video to it was because I believe that wildlife photographers um, have to think about cropping more than other types of photographers do. The prime reason for that is a lack of control. Um, so, for example, uh, you know, landscape uh, photography, you see on the, the, the many landscape photography vloggers that are out there, um, they dedicate a lot of time to uh, compositions, um, finding compositions, getting set up, um, the light will change but ultimately they can fix and control the composition that they want because a landscape doesn't move. Likewise, uh, someone who's a portrait or people photographer um, can, in most cases, um, slightly direct people, communicate with them and let them know um, what they want to achieve the right composition. But as wildlife photographers, um, we are often completely out of control. We can't really set a composition and hope that an animal is going to walk into that composition at exactly the right angle, uh, nor can we tell that animal what to do and how we'd like them to pose. So often that presents us with uh, some issues. Um, and there's two fundamental reasons for that. The first is that we, uh, the photographer, can't often move ourselves. We're often shooting from a hide or perhaps even from a vehicle uh, where we're limited in how we can move the camera. Uh, the other lack of control factor that we have uh, is our subjects. Um, we don't know what animals are going to do, we don't know uh, exactly how they're going to stand, which way they're going to look, how they're going to move or even when they're going to move. So um, we're often faced with um, having to fly by the seat of our pants as it were in terms of framing our images um, and getting the right composition and those are often things that we have to do in an absolute split second in wildlife photography. So when it comes to cropping I think there are two things to focus on. The first is the limitations of what we should be trying to do with cropping because it is perfectly possible to overcrop an image and uh, give ourselves um, issues in terms of usage. So there are probably three fundamental things to say. First of all, uh, looking at it from the commercial point of view, if, for example, you were uh, taking an image that you wanted to use for stock photography, then that image needs to be of a decent enough size that it will be accepted by a stock library. So, for example, Shutterstock uh, will want uh, a minimum of a 4 megapixel image, um, otherwise it'll be rejected. Um, if you're not sure how to calculate whether your image is uh, 4 megapixels or above, it's very simple. All you do is you multiply the dimensions of the image and divide by one million, and that will give you uh, the number of megapixels of that image. The second thing that we need to bear in mind is if we're looking to print the image, um, that we are not cropping it uh, to such an extent that we haven't got enough data um, to actually make a decent print out of. So uh, when we print, we talk a lot about this magic number of 300 pixels per inch, um, that gives us ideal uh, acceptable quality for an image that's going to be viewed at a reasonably close angle. Um, obviously there are variations to that, that's not a hard and fast rule. If you're printing something large um, but it's going to be seen from much further away then you can obviously drop that down to even as low as 150 pixels an inch um, and still have something that can be viewed at a certain distance perfectly acceptably. Um, but we have to bear in mind that if we're cropping our images, we are limiting the size uh, to which they can be printed. And ultimately, it really just comes down to the sort of image quality um, that you find acceptable, um, even if you're uh, just going to post the image on social media. Um, if we limit ourselves to such a small amount of pixel data within the image, then fine detail is not going to um, render well when you try and process the image and you try and bring out shadow detail from the animal, um, you'll see unacceptable uh, quality levels in the final image just because there's simply not enough pixels to work with. 
But other than applying sensible limitations to how much you crop an image, I do believe that we should be creative um, and we should allow ourselves to play with the crops of images um, and do different things. We shouldn't just rely on the native uh, ratio of the sensor. Uh, so in my case, I use Nikon DSLRs, so uh, they're set to a three by two uh, resolution. Um, but if all of my images were three by two ratio, perhaps that would be a little bit boring. Some subjects, uh, some compositions suit themselves to a more panoramic crop or to a square crop. Um, so we should have that freedom to experiment. Oftentimes, cropping is just a, a, a simple, uh, small thing um, to try and observe some of the best rules of wildlife photography. So, for example, to not have the animal positioned absolutely bang centre in the frame all of the time. Or to ensure that an animal isn't facing out of the side of the frame, but is positioned so that, um, especially if there's some motion involved in, in the shot or a hint of motion, that the animal is moving or looking into the frame. Uh, which makes it a much more pleasant um, uh, image to view. But sometimes we need to go a little bit further than just a basic uh, small crop um, and actually do something a little bit more extreme to um, produce an image that otherwise we wouldn't have done anything with and would have gone in the bin. So I've got a particular image in mind that I wanted to show you today, which I think is a good example of this, an image that I might have discarded, but actually, by cropping it, I've managed to make more compositional sense out of the image um, and produced a final result that um, it's something that's you know, worth retaining um, where the original uh, composition was not. So let's take a dive into Lightroom. I'm gonna show you a particular image and I'm gonna walk you through the exact thought process that I went through uh, to crop this image and come up with the final composition. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom uh, with the image that I wanted to show you and we are in the develop module with the uh, crop uh, overlay um, switched on so I can walk you through the steps of this image. So just a quick little bit of background on this image. Um, this is a waterhole scene from Itosha National Park, uh, which I shot a couple of months ago. And the image is framed um, as tightly as I possibly could because as I was just mentioning before, I was highly restricted in my movement. I was shooting from a vehicle, I couldn't move the vehicle any closer, and I was using my 500mm lens at 500mm, uh, so this was as tight as I could get this uh, uh, framing of this image. And as you can see, it's chaotic. Um, there's lots of animals sort of all milling around. The reason that I took this picture was really because of this uh, kudu antelope here, which just stepped up onto a little sort of rocky outcrop um, in the middle of the frame and suddenly elevated himself above all the other animals, which I quite liked. Um, but as you can see, the kudu is not prominent enough in the image. We've got lots of animals in the foreground, we've got trees distracting in the background, and it's generally a very busy image. So I need to make more compositional sense out of this and bring attention back to this kudu if this image is going to work in any way, shape or form. So let me step you through what I did. Um, so first of all, you can see that I've still got my original 3-2 uh, native uh, uh, crop ratio uh, over here. Um, so first of all, I brought the image in because I wanted to get rid of, of this tree on the right hand side here. And there's a sort of big gap with no animals in here. And these animals over on the right hand side aren't really doing anything interesting. So that was my first thought. Um, my second thought uh, was then actually to uh, break free and start of the of any particular aspect ratio. So you can see that what I've done is I've taken the padlock off uh, the crop ratio here so that I can move the edges of the image independently. Um, and that's really important to give you the freedom to sort of find the right composition without being constrained by any particular ratio. So my next thought was just to start nudging in the, the edges of the image here. Um, if I step back a sec, um, you can see that this top part of the image here, you know, the, again, we've got this big distracting tree. The sky is not very interesting. Um, so my next thought was, let's get rid of that. Let's bring that, that down and put the kudu more at the, at the top of the frame. And then I just started to move in and just exclude some of these animals from either side. This uh, springbok over here, um, you know, is at a bad angle um, with its back to me. Um, 
and then I had the same thought about this spring block over here on the left hand side, its head disappeared behind a zebra um, and it, uh, it just allows us to get rid of this um, uh, tree trunk here which is distracting. So I'm just looking at how I can bring this down um, and just start to make ever smaller um, adjustments um, to what I actually want to fit in the frame. So I've decided to leave this a uh, little bit of foliage but put that right in the corner of the frame there and then just make some other minor adjustments um, until I'm uh, happy with where I'm at. So this was pretty much where I was happy with but I'm still at uh, I'm still on this, this custom crop size so I wanted to see uh, I could then use um, this left hand side just to, to see um, where I would be able to drag the image to um, to hit um, a, a more standard um, size and as it turned out I only needed to move it in a tiny little bit to uh, hit a 5-4 uh, crop ratio which is one of the presets that I have in Lightroom. So there we've got 5 by 4 uh, crop of this image. Now you can see it is a big crop. We are not using um, probably two thirds or, or even three, or three quarters of the, of the image that we originally were. But if I just switch on very quickly the uh, loop overlay so that you can see, we still have an image here which is 3600 pixels wide uh, by nearly 2900 tall. So this is actually, in calculating uh, the megapixels, this is still a 10 megapixel image. So there's no problem uh, from a, a, an image size uh, for this to be acceptable to a stock library. And this is still printable as a decent quality. Um, you know, thinking of that 5-4 ratio and thinking about 300 pixels per inch in printing size, this is still perfectly printable as a 15 uh, by 12 print. So that's a reasonable size print. So I'm quite happy that this is an acceptable crop um, for this image. Um, I'm fortunate I use a Nikon D800 which produces very very large files and it means I have that ability um, to crop quite considerably if I need to. So that's this image um, uh, as I produced it and if I um, just take the crop tool off uh, you'll see that is the, the crop uh, that I ended up with which now makes a lot more sense. Okay so I hope that was useful to just step through that process for you and show you how I thought about the framing of that image, how much I could crop, what it needed. If I'd ended up with a crop that had left me with an image of say 2,000 pixels across then I would have junked it um, and wouldn't have bothered continuing with it. But let me put up on screen now for you the final version of this picture fully processed <clears throat> so you can see what we ended up with. I don't think it's a perfect image, it's a very very busy image but that is the nature of waterhole scenes at Itosha. So um, just because it's not uh, a clean portrait style picture, um, you know, with a, with a beautiful clean background and a clearly defined portrait, it uh, doesn't mean it's not an image that I don't like. It's, it is a true representation of, of what those scenes are like. Um, and it has uh, something about it um, with that kudu as the central um, point of the image that I still quite like. So I hope that was useful. Um, the next video uh, that will be coming will be another uh, vlog from uh, Namibia um, and it will be about Itosha itself. Um, so that will hopefully follow on quite nicely from, from this image that you'll be able to see um, what happened when I was actually in Itosha um, and uh, how we moved about there, the places we went and the things that we saw. So that will be coming in a few days. Thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, I'm trying to grow this channel like crazy, so uh, if you're not already subscribed, um, please do consider um, giving it a like, hitting the subscribe and the notification bell, um, and hopefully I'll have some great more content for you very, very soon. But thanks for stopping by and watching this one. Take care, I'll see you soon.